Hey everybody, this is Diana Rose. Welcome back to my channel. This is a review for Love and Marriage Huntsville, season four, episode five, and it was called Coins to Make, Not Friends to Fake. That is what Melody said about Destiny when she walked out of that restaurant. She was pissed. This show was so good, I had to watch it twice. I actually did a poll after watching the show last night, and I asked you guys, who did you believe? Were you Team Melody or were you Team Destiny? 480 of you voted and y'all said, 88% of y'all said you were Team Melody. And 12% of y'all are Team Destiny. I'm Team Melody, but I knew for a fact that this was going to cause an internet war and it did. There has been all kinds of stuff dropping between Melody and Destiny. Carlos King said he is doing a live about everything at some time today. Either way, let's jump into it, okay? It picks up where it left off with Kiki and Tisha. So Tisha runs out the bar, she calls Kimmy, and she's rehashing everything that happened between her and Kiki. Kiki's still sitting in there on the couch and Kiki says she knows she was wrong and she left because she can't take it. Then Kiki walks out behind her. She walks up on Tisha talking to Kimmy and she basically says, why are you talking about me to her? Didn't, isn't this what this whole meeting was about? You was trying to check me for talking about you and you're basically doing the same thing. Tisha says, oh my God, I was just trying to vent. Kiki says, you run out or you walk away every time we have a conversation. This is why we never get anything resolved. Tisha said, I'm tired of talking about it. We've been talking about it for three hours. I have nothing left to give. Furthermore, if we weren't family, we wouldn't be talking. Now this kind of, this stumped me for two reasons. Number one, that's the same thing Kimmy said to you and that shit hurt your feelings when she said it. That's number one. Number two, you said that Kiki was your favorite cousin. So if she's your favorite cousin, why is she so disregardable? Hmm? Why would you tell her you would throw her away if y'all weren't cousins? That means not only did you say what you said, but you absolutely laughed at her. You had no problem talking about this woman like she was a stranger on the street because that's truly how you feel about her. But even in this moment, Kiki is like, well, we gotta figure out a way to get over this and to move on. And Tisha says, if you want this to be over, you figure out a way because it's not on me anymore. And I was just like, Tisha, <laughs> Again, I just find this so interesting that people have come to you with the same thing. Melody said the same thing. Let's keep the past in the past. Let's move on. And you weren't willing to do that. Now you're saying it back to your cousin. Tisha is a hypocrite. Marceau is a hypocrite. They sit on their pedestals, their high pedestals, and they look down at everybody else like they should know better when they be the main ones slinging mud. So in the next scene, Martel visits Marceau at Schult. Marceau is sitting there with his hard hat on that has the Schult logo on it. He's definitely a walking billboard for all of his businesses this season. If they're not filming directly inside of Black, he is carrying a coffee cup or wearing a sweatshirt with one of the business logos on it. So good for Marceau, I guess, for uh, getting his advertising in. Anyway, him and Martel catch up. Um, Martel says, I didn't see you at the book signing. And Marceau, who already told him he had his own children's birthday to deal with, he was like, oh, how'd that go? Uh, was there a good turnout? Martel said, yeah, it was a good turnout, but Melly didn't bring the kids. Uh, Marceau says, didn't bring the kids, but it was, but they wrote the book. And then he asked, were you embarrassed? And Martel said, very much so. I'm still embarrassed. He went, I gave her enough notice. And then Marceau says, did she tell you why? And he went, well, she would say, not that he asked her, she would say it was because her, it was her week. And I almost have to respect that. Martel then says that he and Melody only talks by email and that he has to do it that way because he needs to keep documentation that he's tried to talk to her about the kids. He talks about how hard divorce is and, you know, basically he doesn't get to do all the things he did when he was married. So, yeah, that's what divorce is. In confessional, Marceau says he feels bad for Martel because he knows how much he loves his children. So he's again painting this, he's a great father picture. Um, and then he says that both Melody and Martel are using their children as pawns. And he says it with an air of superiority like he always do, like he's better than this situation. When it was just last week that he was sitting 
in his living room with his wife and children making s'mores and they were literally gawking at him like it was Christmas. Like this, he only comes around once a year. Tisha even had to say, thank you. Thank you for spending time with us. Thank you for, you know, suggesting this. And he was like, Tisha, don't thank me because he was so damn embarrassed. And she was like, I know, I know. That was her saying, you don't spend time with us. We hardly ever see you. You don't go on vacation with us. Man, if you want to be superior, you're going to have to get your own home right. Anyway, Martel ends up inviting Marceau to Atlanta. Marceau smirks like, um, really? Martel says, well, it's not that kind of trip. We won't be going to any clubs or anything like that. And in my head, I'm like, of course you won't, because according to Marceau, he doesn't do clubs or anything like that with you. Um, but then Marceau says, you know, even if we were to go to a club, I mean, that's okay. I can go to a club. Martel says, well, I'm not married. You know, I'm single. And I was like, is anybody going to check on her? Because we know how much she hates the show. I know that she's been, you know, out here screaming that she's single. But you're single now too? Oh, okay, man. So then Marceau basically says, you know, he can go wherever he wants to. Because he knows how to maintain himself in whatever environment he in, he's in. In confessional, Marceau says he can do whatever he wants to do because he and Tisha trust each other. He also says that there are very few people whose opinion he value. And Tisha just happens to be one of the people whose opinion he very much values. I know that everyone at home was screaming at the TV like, man, please, you got to be lying. But that is typical Marceau, right? And then Martel is like, yeah, I, I understand. I respect that. However, do you think there's a chance that you and I could work together? And Marcel tries to give him his props. Yo, there would be no Schult if it wasn't for you. Um, Schult is a combination of Holt and Scott. So absolutely, I think there is, you know, an opportunity there. there. However, I have some things that I need to protect. Number one would be myself, number two would be my wife, and number three would be my business. And make no mistake, Marceau was definitely taking a dig because he is a classic, I told you so type of MF, okay? I don't care how low down dirty Marceau is, and he is, he could be doing the exact same thing. But if someone get caught doing what he does, he will definitely find an opportunity to say, I told you so. And that's what he did in that moment, okay? Melody had been screaming that forever, especially since, you know, knowing he had this affair. Learn how to protect yourself, learn how to protect your wife and your family, and learn how to protect our companies. Be a protector. And Martel wasn't. And even though he helped Marceau build his wealth, Marceau was very clear to say, no one else will be able to take from me the way you allowed someone to take from you, okay? Next up was a filler scene with Kimmy and Maurice. Kimmy tells Maurice that she had overheard Kiki and Tisha going at it, uh, that basically Kiki accused Tisha of doing the very same thing, talking about her with Kimmy that she is accusing Kiki of doing with Melody. Um, Maurice just says, you know, I feel sorry for you because I know that Wanda's going to come for you. Um, Kimmy says, listen, Tisha and Kiki have been beefing for years, way longer than I ever even met them. And again, I have to say, Kimmy, if that's true, then why did you bring that to Tisha? Next scene is Tisha and Marceau. They are at Schult and Marceau brings Tisha a cup of coffee. Again, they are really trying to make us forget that Marceau made Tisha get him a cup of coffee because he did not hold her opinion in high regards. Okay, so we know this already, sir. Stop passing this damn coffee. Okay, now Tisha is sitting there with a bunch of papers at a desk. She's shuffling things around like she's, you know, a businesswoman. And then Tisha says, you know, that she wants her mom to shadow Marceau and the kitchen manager at the lounge. To which Marceau says, that is a tall order, Tisha. But then he says, okay, T, you win. And boom, there you have it. That is the premise for Tisha and Marceau's show. Mark my words, I was one of the first to say that I thought they were setting us up for Tisha and Marceau to lead the franchise for Huntsville. And now the premise is going to be all the, you know, crazy antics between Miss Wanda and Marceau 
at black. So there you have it. Anyway, Marceau ends up telling Tisha that Marce Martel wants back into Schultz and that, you know, because she is the majority owner, he thought that he needed to come to her with it. And she sits there with her coffee and like really ponders. She gives a couple compliments about Martel before saying, I don't trust him. Even though he apologized, I don't trust him. He tried to destroy my family and I don't think I can get over that. Um, Marcel says that he agrees with her and that he would proceed however she wants to. Uh, however, um, you know, he, he does want to consider it, maybe bring him in on a project with Destiny. And Tisha says, you know, that's fine. However, she appears very adamant about not bringing him back into the fold as a partner. She does not want him to buy back in. Oh, well, we'll see. Next scene is Destiny and Maurice. Uh, Destiny visits Maurice at his business. You know, he runs a credit repair business. Um, she lets him know that she has overextended herself, that she is in the dumps. Her credit score is in the dumps. Um, I'm assuming that after the divorce, the way it sounded is after the divorce, whatever home that she and LeBaric purchased, I guess LeBaric is um, paying for that home and she has a year to buy it for herself. Uh, in the meantime, she has all these bills coming in. Um, her own business, Madani, has been open, close, open, close. She can't afford to keep people um, as employees. She can't make the payroll. Um, of course, she has this new baby at home. She doesn't help, have help with that. Um, either way, she's kind of, you know, she's just in a bad spot. Um, and then she again says that she was on public assistance. Now, for some reason, Maurice, who is a lawyer and a credit repair person, says to her, oh, public assistance, do you mean the PPP loan? A loan is not public assistance. I'm not sure why they are saying that here. That is the silliest thing. But she says, no, no, public assistance. What do you mean public assistance? Is it WIC? Is it is it actual welfare? Let us know because if you have a 401k, if you have savings, if you own a home, all of these things, like, I, I just don't know. You're putting yourself on a level that I don't necessarily think you are coming in with your Fendi bag and all that mess. Cut it out. You own a business, lady. How did you, how did you end up getting, you know, public assistance, as you so-called say? It is absolutely mind-boggling. Anyway, Maurice decides to give her some advice about how to use the business to kind of leverage herself. She says that was always the plan, so we'll see if she gets there. Then Maurice decides to be the bone carrier and ask her about her beef with Melody. Destiny says that Melody sees Tisha as an enemy and that she took her friendship from her because of it, even though she believed that Melody was encouraging her to be friends with Tisha. So she thinks she's being unfairly punished. And then Marie says, would you still be friends with Tisha knowing all that you know about her now? And Destiny said, absolutely, she's a sweet girl. Then Destiny gives this really mournful story about how she's been having hard times and that, you know, she wants to pick up the phone and call her good friend Melody, but she can't. Then Marie says, well, who did you call? And she sat there and fanned her eyes fanned her eyes trying to stop herself from crying, only she couldn't. So then she starts dabbing her eyes and said, I called Tisha and I almost fucking puked. Then Maurice encouraged her to stay friends with, with Tisha. He didn't say, do you want to repair your friendship? Or maybe you and Melody can, you know, take some time, take a few, you know, months apart and then get back together. He just said, I think you should stay good friends with Tisha. Last scene, y'all. Melody and Destiny. This is where it all goes down. Melody is at a restaurant. She has already ordered for both her and Destiny. Destiny walks in. Melody compliments her, tells her she looks pretty. She says, thank you. Uh, they sat down. They are, it's, it's awkward and you can tell. Um, Melody says, so you wanted us to talk. And Destiny is kind of, it's taken her a little bit to get into it. So Melody says, so what do you think is going on? How do you feel? She's trying to encourage her, right? Uh, Destiny um, just says, well, there's a mutual friend who, you know, I was working on a project with and she pulled out of this project uh, due to some perceived beef between me and you. And um, she was like, basically, I feel like you've been talking about me or told someone to stop working with me because of it. 
So up until this meeting with Mel, Destiny has been making it out like she was hurt about losing Melody's friendship. But now what she's saying to Melody is that she's really hurt that she lost a business connection. You guys, let me know if y'all heard that too. So Melody responds that this friend, who was actually Melody's friend, not Destiny's, um, that she had talked to her and said to her that she had not spoken with Destiny um, and that she does not look at stories. She cannot help what people think about anything that's going on on social media. That's not where she lives. Um, but that what she was posting was not in response to Destiny. Either way, the lady told Destiny that she doesn't want any backlash and that she and Mel needed to work out whatever it is that was going on between them uh, before she felt comfortable with moving forward with the project. In Confessional, Melody says, I don't accept that Destiny lost any type of anything with her business because of me. I don't accept it. And I have to say, I don't accept it either because we just heard your last scene with um, Maurice where you said, you didn't even have your business hasn't even been open consistently that you don't have the money to finish the build out that all the things that you had planned prior to your divorce your divorce basically erased those things and you need to get back on your feet just so that you can buy the house outright because you didn't want to uproot your baby who won't even remember the house destiny says that she told the mutual friend she would love to talk to melody but melody isn't answering her calls so how do i talk to someone who doesn't talk back melody says listen you told me when you were going through your stuff that you had to take time to isolate think and then you'd come and share what you wanted when you wanted to and i thought that was okay but you're not giving me the same grace you're not giving me the same respect. Now, Destiny is nodding her head like, yeah, I did tell you that. I did not want anyone knowing that I was, you know, going through my divorce or whatever. I know she was shy about bringing it to TV. I don't know. Either way, she nods like she understands and that she did say it. She confirms it. Um, in Confessional Melody says, you know, I do admit to going silent after filming. I, I We heard her apologize at the reunion for that. We heard her. But Melody says, you know, I did try to contact Destiny and she says to her across the table, I don't appreciate you basically telling a falsehood on me. The type of person I am, I apologize to you. I let it lie. However, Destiny, I have receipts. She pulls out the phone. She starts going through them. On this day, I sent you a text. You ignored me. You didn't respond to my text. On this day, the very next day, actually, I said this to you and you didn't respond to me. On the next day, I sent it again. I sent, I reached out to you. You said, I'm chillaxing. Destiny calls her a liar. I didn't say chillax and I don't even talk like that. She said, you absolutely did. Turn the phone around for Destiny to see it. Destiny's still like, I didn't do it. Melody's like, why would I make up a thread? Are you basically saying I, I forged this thread or doctored this thread? Then she said, Destiny, here you are. You sent me a picture of yourself at the water. And I was like, good for you for getting whatever time. She was like, yeah, that's me. She was like, girl, it's all you basically. Then Destiny rolls her eyes. And Melody says, don't be rude. And Destiny bucks her eyes open like she's about to pounce. What? What did you say? And Melody said, don't be rude. Then Destiny says, I'm a grown woman. Don't tell me that I'm being rude. Then Destiny says, the issue was that we didn't talk. So you can read all the text messages that you want. Melody says, yeah, I'm going to read the text messages. Then Des says, it doesn't matter what you read. And Melody said, if it doesn't matter then we don't have to have this conversation. Now, you guys, this is where things went completely left for me. And I feel like destiny drove it there, honestly. Number one, you said you didn't know where your relationship with Melody stood. However, in those text messages, it sounds like she was cool and you were the one who wasn't responding to her. When she was sending those text messages, you didn't respond. The next day she sent another text message, you didn't respond. When you finally did respond, she was like, congratulations, girl, good for you for taking a break. Now, Melody could have been sensitive about you're not answering her text when she was texting you, but she didn't. You are a new mommy. You are new to the show. You might need a break from the show. She was good. She would just text you the next day and give you an opportunity to respond, I guess. Um, and again, you didn't do that for her. Uh, then Melody brings up, now on top of you, you know, basically telling that lie, you let Tisha say that Melody isn't a good friend 
and you didn't try to take up for me in that moment. And then Destiny says, that was between y'all. I, I wasn't going to jump into that. Now, here's where things get crazy too, because we have seen Destiny time after time after time. In fact, that's who De Destiny was on the show. Destiny was a writer for Mel, whether it was Martell, whether it was Martell's mama. If somebody came from Melody and they were wrong, Destiny jumped in and basically took up for Melody. So you mean to tell me that when Tisha said that mess, you couldn't have said, well, that hasn't been true for me and Melody. What you actually said was, I don't know. I don't know because she and I haven't talked. That was dirty. That was dirty. Then Melody basically said she started having doubts about Destiny when the two of them would be on the phone and Destiny would say, oh, your ex is beeping in. And she said there was one time where she was talking to Destiny and she said, oh, Martell just pulled up. So she was like, she had no idea what was going on because for her, Martell was the ops and she was telling Destiny all the things that he had been doing to her. She said, I told you what was going on on social media. And um, we all remember when Melody had a interview where she said, someone was taking a conversation that she was having on her phone like to back to Martell. She said, I didn't know if my phone was tapped or what because I was saying things and then those conversations, he would repeat to me verbatim. Destiny actually says at this point, well, if you had a problem with it, you should have said something. Melody then says, I shouldn't have to. <laughs> that should be common sense. And Destiny says in confessional, I was friends with Martell before. I met Melody. However, I always put Melody first. And I'm telling you, I'm so confused how Destiny, who is always keeping it real, that's her favorite thing to say, is so confused by this other than you were mad at Melody because you thought she pulled a business project from you. Not even a deal for a store that's not even open, okay? Instead of just, you know, giving her some time to cool down and then coming to her and saying, yo, I hope you didn't think X, Y, Z. Sometimes that happens in friendships. Sometimes you got to pull back and just let some things, you know, just go flat for a minute before you can come back and say, I see things from your perspective now, because that's really what happened. Melody is going through a trauma with, you know, divorcing this man. They've been together for 14 years. You were only with your husband for a year. OK, and you don't want to talk about anything that happened between you and him. But you want her to just get over it with whatever happened between her and Martell. Then Melody says, basically, Destiny, that coupled with the fact that I overheard you talking shit about me to Tisha kind of made me just pull back from you. And then Destiny, her rebuttal is, well, you shouldn't have been listening to the door. So if I can't trust you to be my friend, period, you know what I'm saying? If I can't trust you not to talk about me to my enemy, then you're not my friend. You're not. Then to make sure that that bridge was burned to complete ashes, Destiny said, so you heard the conversation that Tisha and I were having about you, but you didn't hear the one that my aunt was having about you. If he was next door, you didn't hear my aunt say, oh, you should stop being Melody's friend for blah, blah, blah reasons. Melody said I didn't hear, but you know what, girlfriend? You take care, okay? I'm done with this conversation. Then Destiny says, okay, I'll pray for you. Melody said, don't pray for me. And anything that you pray for, I promise, is going to come right back to you. And that's when Melody got outside and said, not today, baby. I got coins to make, not friends to fake. And I have to say, I am 100% on Melody's side. I'm not sure how or what people see in Destiny. Please let me know in the comments. Let me understand how y'all feel that this was right. Because Destiny wasn't upset that Melody pulled her friendship away. Destiny was upset because she thought she lost a business connection, a project not even a real business deal, a project, okay? So y'all tell me what y'all think about this episode. Number five, please like, comment, subscribe, share this video, and I will catch you guys on the next one.